one of the best stories in all of sports is the Las Vegas Golden Knights, an expansion team that is already the most successful expansion franchise in sports history, not just NHL, but sports history. And the, and the ride keeps going. The general manager of that team is George McPhee, and he joins us here uh, on the Dan Patrick Show, just like you drew it up, right, George? <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh, oh sure. Um, we, we weren't expecting this, Chris. We, uh, we wanted to be good. We wanted to be competitive. Uh, but this is uh, certainly beyond what uh, we could have hoped for. Okay, so when you're drafting an expansion team and putting together a roster, I mean, what are the core things that you're looking for, and, and what are your expect- expectations realistically in that first year? Well, we had two objectives going into the expansion draft, and that was to to get a team that could compete because it was important to the NHL, important to Las Vegas, important to our owner who paid $500 million for the franchise that – we have a competitive team, and, and we give the marketplace a chance. Um, fans can come and watch this club and uh, be entertained by it and want to come again and sort of grow some roots and grow them deep. And So the objective was to, to be competitive. We drafted um, a fairly young team. Uh, there were a few players that we considered uh, – you know that we, you know, if we didn't do well, we could we could move at the deadline. But for the most part, we drafted young players that could be here for a while, and um, and grow with us, and 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 um, and develop with us. And and then the the other objective was uh, to get surplus draft picks, uh, to to get accumulate as many as we could, so that we could also draft our way to success. So and I. I think we accomplished both goals. The team's pretty darn competitive, and we have a lot of draft picks. When did you know this season that you might have something a little better than just a competitive team? Hard to say, Chris. There were certain times throughout the season. You know, we started real well, but lots of teams can do that. And we had a real good run in December. You know, as a manager, I'm not sure you let yourself – uh, think that way that this is a real good team because uh, my fingers were crossed all year hoping that we didn't turn to dust in the following week. When we got to the deadline, that was the point where we had to say, "Okay, we are uh, we're we're all in and and we're going to try to add to this team to make it better." Or uh, you know, do we go in the other direction? Well, we sure didn't want to dismantle anything after the way the team had played, so we added. Um, some players to, to make us deeper and stronger. And I guess at that point, we were saying we're all in, we're going to go for it. You know, the NHL has has thrived in non-conventional hockey markets before. Vegas is about as unconventional as you get. Bef- before you became associated and, and working for this team, w- when the idea of Vegas came up as an NHL market, what did you think? I was uh, kind of intrigued by it. And... Um, and excited about it because I didn't have a job. <laughs> you know, I had another uh, motivation, and I was I was hoping that you know maybe I'd, I'd get a second chance, at least get a chance to interview for a job in Vegas. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about Vegas other than what I'd seen on the strip. I think when you live and work here, it becomes the opposite of of what you whatever you thought of Vegas. Um, it's it's a it's a real easy place to live. It's easy to get around. It's quiet. We have these real beautiful suburbs that we live in. We all live in, uh, uh, most of us live in Summerlin, uh, with great schools and churches and parks and restaurants and kids' sports and everything else. Uh, it's like uh, any other uh, American city. It's, it's, um, but it has a nice small town feel to it. The people are wonderful. Uh, but the support here has been incredible. So, Chris, again, I didn't know what I was getting into, um, but once I got here, um, I sort of got used to it. And then, you know, we have this fabulous uh, uh, arena right on the Strip. It's like dropping, you know, an arena right into Madison Square Garden, right into Times Square. It's, It's perfect. We have a great practice facility. As I said, it's easy to get around, easy to get to the airport, great fan base, no state tax. I thought, geez, it's uh, no state income tax. It, 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 it's uh, if we do our jobs here, we we can win. And uh, you know, I, I think the jobs have gone pretty well, and we put a good team on the ice, and we've got a chance. You guys are kind of like the sports guinea pig in some ways. I think a lot of the 
the the major uh, sports you know, like the NFL is on the way, but you know, the NBA has been intrigued by Vegas for years. Maybe baseball can get in the mix. It, did it feel like a, like people were watching you and to see how this team and 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 it, this market worked out together? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I I, I I imagine they were. I don't know that I really felt that or experienced that. You know, there were some naysayers obviously early on. And, but I think when you get here, you realize that this this town was really craving uh, a, a major league sports team, and you know sometimes sports teams can give uh, certain cities an identity. You know, Las Vegas is a worldwide brand as a as a gaming and an entertainment capital of the world, I guess. But it now has another identity that's becoming a very very good sports town, and uh, so the, the the support that we we've been over capacity in every single game that we've played. We, you know, our our practices are packed. Uh, they're open to the public. We have thousands of people here when we're leaving to go away uh, to play a playoff game. Uh, that have a little parade for us as we're leaving. Uh, it, it's really a remarkable place, uh, uh, and and, and the, the support has just been uh, beyond our wildest uh, expectations. How many uh, celebrity ticket requests do you have for the conference finals? Uh, I wouldn't know that. We'd have to talk to the business <laughs> side, but uh, we've certainly all year long been overwhelmed with ticket requests. And, you know, I, I was told by the realtor when we were moving in here, make sure you have extra bedrooms because everyone wants to come to visit you when you live in Vegas. <laughs> and, and the realtor was right. Uh, the neat thing is I've had lots of friends and family and people I haven't seen in many years want to come out. And I think everyone in our organization has experienced that. It's been kind of a neat year that way. I mean, do you get like the cast of Cirque du Soleil saying, you know, we need like 50 for like a random Tuesday? Well, we, we certainly have great relationships with these organizations and we go to see their shows a lot. They come to the games a lot. They've performed between periods here. Uh, those nights are really, really special when Cirque is on the ice doing what they do between periods. Um, so it's it's been a... You know, it's just a neat place to live and work because of all that it has to offer. Uh, you know, there's A-list entertainment everywhere you look, and it's if you want it, it's there. Yeah, no question about that. Well, George, congratulations on all the success and uh, more to come with the Western Conference Final uh, scheduled to start. Good luck, and uh, thanks for joining me here on the show. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Chris. Be well. That's George McPhee, the general manager of the uh, Las Vegas Golden Knights. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.